1013 on the IOD network. Ten seventeen. One thing I'll say about this ice cream. It is so hard. Because it's frozen, and it's going to be great. Thanks to Damon and his paisans here, three of them, three guys, not one, but three, bring us in just tons and tons, pints and pints and pints and uh, big containers of Edie's. Those are like what? Those are half gallons, I guess. And uh, we're going to have a good time with it. And guess what, Rick? He had the balls to ask me yesterday to save him a pint. We ought to do it out of spite. Save him a pint of cookie dough and do something special in it. Have we got the weasel in the back room to do something special? He'll never know the difference. Now, is the reason that all those lines are lit up because I have this uh, talking head sand in your Vaseline thing? It is? Well, that's not right. Well, we did have a couple of calls on there before that. The last hit around, this had some technical problems over there at uh, what? It sounds bad? How about now? Is that better? Well, look, I can't uh, be responsible for what's going on here. If everybody would just uh, cooperate and do their thing and be reasonable, we wouldn't have to keep adjusting uh, the thing, keep uh, pumping up the uh, remote control with Kevin Dillon. See, I remember that today. How do you like that? Mmm, wavy gravy line. How's wavy gravy line? Do we have that in here? So how's, um... No, that's not in here unless it's under Davy. One moment, please. Davy Jones? That's not in there. So how's Davy Gravy Line? How's that possible? Is it on the gravy line? Boy, this thing's starting to really... It's starting to get me aggravated. They warned me. They said, boy, don't get a... Um, don't get a false sense of security with computers because in the beginning I think it's great. No more sucking, please. Thank you, Dave. Okay, let's do a lady in Fort Lauderdale who probably uh, must want the CDs because otherwise she wouldn't be calling me. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. I don't want the CDs. Well, great. And you actually called to speak to me? Yeah, I did. I can't get over this. You could knock me over with a feather duster. <laughs> I just want to ask you, did you see on the news on Channel 7 um, a couple days ago about the Santa Maria people that were sacrificing animals? Sure. Right in front of the reporters? Right. Don't you find that appalling? I find it nauseating and revolting. And one guy, they kicked out of the uh, church. Yeah. They yeah. said, uh, too many animals. I think it was like 19 or 20. They said, anything more than 15, we get upset about. But you know what really made me sick? What's that? Beyond that the they news? had to show it on the news? That Not only did they show it on the news, but all of these reporters stand by and watch it happen. Mm. You know, these people have no decency. Just well, what did you want them to do, start a riot? Well, they could have done something to try and stop them. Like I mean, what? They said that... They could have grabbed the chicken? A no. The, they had that goat in their arm, and the guy was trying to kill it. The blade was too dull. Oh, to oh no. They had to do it again. Oh. They have a crowd of reporters and cameramen there, and they just stand there and watch it. I mean, it I... It is so hard. God. I... I, I, I didn't see. I, I refused to watch any of it. As soon as they put the story on, I, like, uh, said, not for me. Yeah, well, I thought... It's just... I mean, I, I find the Santa Maria people disgusting to begin with. And Do you? Absolutely. Somebody needs to split their throats. Really? Absolutely. Okay. But to think that there's also regular people out there that will stand by and watch it. Look, and don't you understand? News people, people will stand by and watch anything as long as they can keep the tape rolling and get the story. They don't give a crap. Well, it's a sad, sad day. It is a sad you know? day. You're right. I just hope that one of them would have been... Can you explain to me why my bank was closed this morning when it's not a holiday? No, I can't. What bank? Nation's Bank. Really? It's closed? Yeah. I don't have any idea. 8.35 in the morning. The drive through is supposed to open at 8. Maybe somebody will call and answer. Yeah, well. <laughs> because I'm afraid that uh, maybe my bank went out of business or something. I don't think so. Took off with all your money? Yeah, well. Oh, boy. Not that much. <laughs> okay, all well, right. listen, I'm sure a lot of other people are just as uh, PO'd as you are. Yeah, well, thanks for talking I'm, to me. I don't want to get your goat. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. We have an open line. It's in Broward. Fine. Too bad I didn't bring in like a hundred of these CDs, but I don't have a hundred. These are expensive, too. This is a double set. And who the hell would ever want this thing? Life during wartime. Girlfriend is better. And she was. Stay up late. Road to nowhere. Uh, sax and violins. I wonder if a... Huh? It's all great stuff. I don't like the talking heads. I'm sorry, okay? I'm not into the talking heads. You like it. You're not getting it because I'm not going to piss off these people on the phone. I will put, huh? You give it to. What? I'll borrow it from the person you give it no, to. No, you won't borrow it from anybody. How do you like that? You got, did you watch Fatso yet? That Fat Rich oh, yeah. brought you that tape? You did? You did not. Well, so that's your next assignment. 
take care of one thing at a time. Oh, by the way, now before this all starts melting, uh, and I noticed, have <laughs> you noticed that nobody came anywhere near here? <laughs> <laughs> it just dawned on me. I'm sitting here, and there's these three big styrofoam containers with all the ice cream. Nobody came anywhere near the room. Now, is Anna Maria working today now? Is she listening? Because they brought some special uh, spores, uh, s'mores, with spores, for uh, to tickle her taste buds. Old uh, Anna Maria. Tengo mucho pellejo, pero no tengo punta. Ooh, sorry, honey. But now you tengo uh, s'mores, spores. They brought her Edie s'mores just for Anna Maria to tickle uh, the uh, ends of her uh, thing. So I hope she comes in. I want people to come in and eat this ice cream. Now I got my wavy gravy, which is starting to melt. You really can't eat it until it starts getting like real room temperature and gets real, real soft. Because when they first bring it in, it's frozen and it is. It is so hard. But now it's starting to soften up a little bit. Mm -mm. Wavy gravy. I'll do the same thing that Rick did the other day and read the ingredients toffee. Cashews, Brazil nut ice cream with a chocolate hazelnut fudge swirl and roasted almonds. God, is this uh, incredible, unbelievable, indescribable. So anyway, they distribute uh, Edie's and Ben and & Jerry's, and they brought like a bunch of each. I don't see anybody coming in here for the ice cream, and I'm going to tell you this right now. If you don't, then uh, George and I are going to take it all home and put it in the freezer, and you can all stick it where the moon don't shine. At least uh, take it and stick it your name on it and put it in the freezer and uh, hope that within a couple hours it might still be here, although it's unlikely. 10.23, by the way, somebody stole Johnny Darks. Isn't that something? And his ice cream, too. 10.23 on the IOD Network. Yeah, I've been listening to your show since almost day one. Yeah. Uh, because I heard you uh, on, or Neil talking about your show. Right. Okay, how long have you been on the radio station? Well, if you've been listening since almost day one, you do the math. The Randy Road Show, tonight at 7 on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Update on traffic and the current weather forecast. Like that's going to make a difference that you put a thing on there taken? Nobody else is coming here anyway. They must have Hot 105 on the monitors today because there's nobody... Huh? There's nobody in the building listening. Not one person is coming here to grab up some ice cream. There are loads and loads of pints of uh, Ben & Jerry's and Edie's big uh, half gallons, including Edie's crunchy cone with chocolate cone pieces, peanuts, and caramel caramel. Oh, do I hate when people say caramel? That gives me, like, goosebumps. I can't stand when people say that. Caramel, not caramel. But however you pronounce it, it's uh, incredible. God, it's like it's like taking those drumsticks that I'm allergic to and chopping them all up and putting them in ice cream. Mm. Would it be gross if I took a spoonful out of this thing? Like that? Mmm. God. Well, it's about time somebody came up here and got some. Hi, Ben. This is Jerry. Oh. How you been? So anyway, here, wait till you try this. Uh, crunchy cone Edie's, please. It's going to fall on the board and schmutz all over, and somebody's going to get very, very upset. Thank you. And the wavy gravy line. And it's, uh, oh, that's the, this is the best, the wavy gravy. That is tremendous. And you notice that, uh, and there's a s'mores thing in there for uh, Anna Maria, because she said yesterday she wanted some more s'mores and spores to a tickle her taste buds or something like that, but she hasn't made any movement. I guess everybody's either paranoid or they're all listening to Hot 105. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. I don't know where to start. Okay, at the beginning would be a good I, sp place. First of all, yes? Daryl Whiffmore. This has got a lot of potential. Did I give him the right name or what? Unbelievable. Whiffmore, I told you. Well, you know, he, he whiffed more than anybody i ever seen. I mean, I don't know if it's because he's, the last two games, okay, he faced Saberhagen and, and Tanana. Tanana had his number. He had no chance against Tanana. He got that weak base hit in the ninth inning, which, okay, maybe that'll help him. Did you yeah. hear Gary? A after the outcome was over, like right. uh, like Arrested like got arrested. there. When the game was already uh, decided, then Arrested comes up, gets a hit. Like I said, I don't know where to start. Between the two of them, okay, yeah, Whitmore. And how about Henry Cotto in that nice uh, fielding play in center field again? And Henry Cotto, I mean, I don't He may not Henry be good, Cotto. but he's consistent. Every time the ball gets near him, he boots it. He is, he is marginal at best. At not, best. And not only is he marginal, he's old. Did you see him when he took his hat off? The guy's bald. 32 going on 40. Jesus. Uh, I don't understand what the rush was to dump Magadan. Well, they that's the, dump him within that's the conversation hours? that we're all having is what was the big rush? Okay, he was disgruntled, so you sit him down and uh, you work things out. You give him a little try at first base. You sit uh, the big uh, zero down for a while and, uh, you know, you work it out. 
you know, to try Sheffield and right field, who wanted to play right field. But instead of that, they rushed into this whole thing. They screwed the whole team up. They turned it upside down. And in spite of the fact that we got Sheffield, I still say we had a better team a week ago than we got today. You want to know the funny thing about it? Everybody says, oh, Dombrowski built the, the Expos. What did he build the Expos to? They never made the goddamn playoffs. Well, they got you know they got some good young players, but as far as winning anything, no, you're right. He didn't That's build correct. the Expos. Now he built the Expos for the last five or six years. They haven't had a damn thing. Who cares? You know, you know something. The whole thing's frustrating. The bottom you line. You sound is, a little agitated, I'm me, a little sir. Agitated. The fact that we lost two in a row to a team that hasn't won two in a row since April. In two months. That played like seventy series in a row and never won two consecutive games <laughs> until they played us. Let me ask you this. It wasn't bad enough. We lost that frustrating game the other night when we made two great comebacks. That wasn't bad enough, but then to get blown out last night, and look, and we looked like the real uh, marginal team last night. You know the we point? looked like the expansion team, and they looked like a real team. And how we make them look good beats me. That is not easy to make the that, best look cause good. Because their lineup still is full of all these guys that nobody ever heard of before. They got uh, Coleman and Bonilla and um, and Eddie Murray. And other than that, nobody ever heard of any of these people. And Hunley, because maybe Hunley, yeah, because uh, because his daddy played for the Cubs. But, right. I mean, between Bogar and uh, what's Bogus. The other, Jeremy, Bogus. What's the other guy's name? Jeremy. Uh, uh, I don't know what his name. Burkett. Yeah, who's and the other guy? Uh, the guy with the two earrings and the long hair that looks like a. Uh, I don't know what the hell he is. Yeah, he used to work at GTR, that guy. Let me ask this. Where did they come up with a stat that the Mets have not won two games in a row since... In, 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 since and, April. Yeah, but then, then they look back and they find out that a team hasn't won two in a row since... In, in, you know what I'm saying? They come in 70 games that hasn't happened since 1920. Where do they come up with these things? What do you mean where they come up with them? No, they got a lot of time on their hands. Yeah, apparently. That's what baseball is all about, is statistics. Uh, gee, I, I don't... First in of all, don't you understand the official score? Like Sonny sits up in there, and in between uh, courses of food that they keep bringing him, uh, the official score comes up with this crap. I, I just don't understand what the rush was to dump Magadan. I mean, the, the Strata, not only. I, I don't even know he what blows. to say about he him. He blows. He blows. Uh, he ought to put him on a bus. Put him on a bus to Japan. And oh, see how far it gets. God, I feel better getting it off my chest. Okay. Well, wait, wait. It's going to get worse, yes? And we better not get swept tonight. If we lose tonight, boy, there's going to be a long Yom Kippur weekend. So let's tell I'll you tell that. you that. I am definitely going to that game tonight. Yeah. I, I'd like to see good and pitch. I'd like to put Kelly Shepard and Arrestes Destrada on the same bus to Japan. What's the problem with Shepard? I he, don't even uh, want to go into it. He's a master of disaster. If he can't win it, he wants to make sure that uh, nobody else can either. Knocking people down out there, just uh, his, his, his on-track behavior is so aberrant and unacceptable that I'm surprised that somebody hasn't beaten the living crap out of him yet. The stuff he pulls out there on a racetrack is nauseating and uh, just grotesque, and he makes me puke, and I wish he'd go back to Toronto and stay there. Have a great day, pal. Just absolutely outrageous. If I can't win it, I'm out here to make sure that uh, somebody else don't. And he makes sure. We have an open line. It's in Broward, 524-9463. Here's uh, Palm Beach. Hello. Morning, Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. Welcome to a great Thursday, to a long 85-day holiday weekend. I was just going to comment on how interesting your Thursday was starting off. Yeah, with ice cream? Exactly. I know that you're going to get about 1,500 calls about the Marlins game, so I'm going to kind of stay away from that. I know the game blew last night. You're going to steer away from it? Yeah, and I know that uh, I'll leave that up to somebody else to talk about. Okay. But while you were at the game, while I assume you were at the game... What, last night? Yeah. No, I was at the track watching the game. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you probably didn't get a chance to see it. It was on the news um, last night. No. It's about this uh, TV violence crap. Yeah. Did you see anything about that? No, I heard the story that they're going to put voluntary disclaimers on there, which is pretty amusing. Well, and not only that, but uh, the uh, the four major networks, the head guys. The head guys, yeah. The head guys. Mm -hmm. They got on the air. It is so hard. Tell me about it. Uh, they got on the air last night, and they were saying that, oh, well, you know, we've, we've really kind of pushed the limits to TV, and children are just watching and watching, and we just can't have that. But who is the, who are they, and who is the Congress to make all this crap up that, you know, who says that a parent can't come over, turn off the exactly. TV? Exactly. They sit up there in Washington, and they start making all these threats. They bring the executives in. Exactly. And, and they start making all these threats, like like somebody empowered them. To censor what material is on? Well, I mean, just just like this bit about language on radio, it's the same thing. Who the funny. hell who the hell ever told them that they had the authority to decide that they were going to be the censors for public taste? It's a bunch of shots. 
Exactly. It really is. I mean, who are they to sit up there and play... play well, they're uh, a bunch the of goddess. shot heads is who they are. The, the goddess with our channel changers. Right. I mean, it's... it's unbelievable. And, of course, uh, they're doing it because they're pandering so desperately to what the goody two-shoes, this family values crowd out there yeah. who, uh, you know, want to repress everybody so they can do all their stuff behind closed doors. Well, they still have a little bush left in them. Yeah, yeah they're still so bushed. to speak, yeah. Still bushed out. But uh, in closing, I'd like to wish my uh, sister Tracy a happy birthday. In fact, I noticed with all the screw-ups, you have to wonder if there isn't just a little bit of bush left in the White House. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Have Thank a great you. day. Uh, in uh, in I have closing, a yes. Shameless request. Last yes. thing. Uh, I can't get over the uh, Larry King phone call about the bald spot. Okay. I, I just want to hear the whole phone call. Okay. A Thanks, Dale. Say have goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, we have an open line. It's on the uh, green line, 1-800-944. Have some ice cream, Greg. Come on, have uh, two or three gallons. Well, i got to offer it to anybody that shows up. I bet Jake would like some ice cream. Huh? He's going to have to come in here and get it for himself, and the ice cream, too, and uh, anybody else. I, I, we've never had this experience. I think the whole Rick and uh, Suds thing the other day just has soured everybody in the building on uh, the ice cream deal because as much as they want it, they're so terrified of the... Uh, whole uh, thing that happened. See, we want to share. We want to spread it around. Now, Bob Green and Cheryl were up here hopping up tons and tons of good stuff, and they're more, and then we we're more than entitled to take all you want, everybody. Come and get it, but don't take Anna Maria's spores, please, because uh, she wants to share those with Randy. The uh, wavy gravy is the absolute best. Did you have that yet? The best ice cream... Huh? I put a little paper on it. The best ice cream in the history of the human race is Ben & Jerry's Wavy Gravy. It is just, uh, oh, to die for and from. It's 1037 on the IOD Network. I just noticed something that in one of your interviews with John Candy, I believe, it looked like an older interview, you had less hair than you have today. How do you explain that? I uh, don't wear a wig, sir. Paint your bald spot? What bald spot? You paint your bald spot? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. My hair grows. You paint your bald spot. I don't have a bald spot. How come you had less hair on the tape? Maybe my hair grew. Maybe I had a bad haircut that day. You paint By the way, something. What do you care? Paint your bald spot? I don't. Do you paint your bald spot? Paint your bald spot? I'm sick. Hi, this is Larry King, and they don't come any better than Neil Rogers. Okay, 1041 at WIOD. We finally got some of our ladies to come in and start hopping up the ice cream. It's about time. And uh, did anybody take the wavy gravy? You've never tasted anything like that. Try one of those. Those are just, I'm serious, I've never in my life had anything this outstanding in my mouth. I mean, this is just uh, to die from and for and about. So uh, where's uh, Jake? Anyway, it's 1041 at WIOD, and uh, thanks again to, uh, what was his name, Damien? Okay, Annette. And get your hair straightened now, will you please? Her hair, every, she's like a chameleon. Every day her hair is like a different shade of orange. Old carrot top. I don't know what she's doing. Anyway, let's uh, do Miami. Hello. Saver Hagen. God. Yeah. <laughs> a Mets fan. Yeah, you guys are really the best. As a matter of fact, that's one thing I should have done at the very beginning today. But we're having a little bit of a problem. My fault. Operator error. Make no mistake about that. Where's the thing, uh... Huh? Come on. Boy, really off to a bad start with my computer or a technique today. The Mets suck. Oh! But made up for it there. Okay, let's go to, uh, yeah, you guys are really doing it. The Mets, they've won two in a row. Hallelujah. Here's uh, a punk in the gables. Hello? Punk is gone. Punk's long gone. Here's uh, uh, Fort Myers. Hello? Neil. Yes, sir. How goes it? Great. Are they on the air today, Fort Myers? Yes, we are back up and on the air. Well, congratulations, Tony Allen. I knew you could do it. I knew we could pay that electric bill. <laughs> they said they were up all night working on it. I'll bet. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that uh, chocolate you had the other day that uh, gave you the trot? It is so hard. Uh, that was sorbitol. Sorbitol. Maybe a new uh, flavor for Ben and Jerry's. Mm-mm. I'll pass on that. <laughs> or I'll pass with that. Uh, Neil, I don't want to suck around too much. Um, I would love to have the CDs. Would you? Yeah. Okay. That's going to make all the other lines go out now. <laughs> Sorry, I hate to do it to you. Why is that? Um, I offered it. That's true. I just just, oh, like, I just like the ice cream. We've got gallons and gallons and pints of ice cream in here. This is the hardest I've ever had to beg for people to come in here and uh, get some free goods. I don't understand. There's uh, there's one in here that I just saw. An Edie's 
A big, oh, I guess they took it. Uh, cherry something with the cherry. It was just beyond belief. Edie, didn't she one of the... Uh... Chocolate peanut butter cookie dough. That's uh, Ben and Jerry's, of course. Chocolate chip cookie dough, which Rick wants me to save for him, and I won't. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I'll have to, because nobody else is going to take it. Just feel them clog- arteries clogged. Exactly. Well, a pint of ice cream ain't going to kill me, you know what I'm saying? That's true. I mean, if I mind my P's and Q's the rest of the day, this isn't going to kill me. Definitely. Well, listen, hang on and enjoy it, and George will uh, get your shoe size and stuff. Thanks, Neil. Okay. Okay, that's gone, so that'll take care of clearing out the lines. We don't want to have too many calls on a holiday weekend. I can't believe we have any calls. I was driving to work this morning, and I thought, boy, get that computer just loaded up, because it's going to be grim and slim and uh, and none. Because there just uh, was no traffic at all. It's uh, this long 75-day holiday weekend, which more power to you. Just don't blow yourself away with all those fireworks. I get the, I love seeing fireworks. I think almost everybody loves beautiful fireworks. They're, like, exciting. It's great. Well, if there's anybody who deserves some ice cream, it's Sharon. <coughs> right? She said, I don't know. Well, I said yes. So take, like, uh, and by the way, the real, now, do you like Edie's or Ben and Jerry's better? Both. Both. Well, take uh, three of each. There's some, like, beautiful... Oh, there's wavy gravy. That's, uh, oh, you'll die when you try that. The best. And there's a bunch of uh, Ben and Jerry's on the end there, too. Uh, anyway, here's a mobile in Fort Myers. Hello? Neil. Yes, sir. What time did you leave the track last night? What time did I leave after the last race? 11 o'clock. Um, did you happen to hear any of the 10th inning show? No. On the way out? No. It was great. The Gak... Isn't it the Gak who does the 10th inning show? Yeah, right. The gacky. That's because they know everybody's going to go to bed at that hour, so they figure that's a good way to start. I was on my way home, and the first... Here's the gacky sucks, okay? Sorry. <laughs> the first three calls he got were, were Magadan... Supporters. Supporters. Great! He was... You know how when, like, uh, they have, like, a press conference and, uh, for, like, say, the president, and he goes, well, we'll talk about everything but that, no, and then he gets, like, ten questions about Right, it. right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He was like... And, Please, anybody but Magadan. People were calling in, and he was so frustrated. Why is that? Because he gets one phone call, and you can tell he's frustrated. You can tell he's with, like, enough... So, in other Magadan. words, he's, he's become a complete chill because they carry the games over there, so he doesn't want to tell the truth? Exactly. It's, well, here's what he said. He said, well, they, so why, why did they get rid of Magadan and, uh, and, and get, like, nobody in return for him? And he goes, well, that's what the, their goal was to put the best team on the field, and that's what they felt, and that's the best team that they could put on the field, and their plans didn't include Dave Magadan. And he hangs up, and you could tell, and the very next Joe, call, you are an asshole, the, Joe. You, and by the way, I see Seattle beat Minnesota 5-3 to three last night. I wonder if the, uh, huh? What did Magadan do? Magadan was one for four. He's hitting three eighty five in the three games. He also had a walk, so he was on base twice. He scored a run, and they won 5-3. to three. Against pitching he's never faced before. Right. Oh. In a league he's never played it before. Exactly. What are you going to do? Hey, one more thing now. Um, how come I've never seen Rush Limbaugh and Lloyd Lindsay Young in the same room? <coughs> well, think about it. Have a good day. Have a great day. Hello, Lardass. We have an open line in uh, Dade, 751, and one on the green line. So Magadan is, uh, gets another hit and a walk. He's on base twice. His team is winning. In fact, let me take a look at the standings. I don't know uh, what happened uh, elsewhere. Um, Seattle, look at that. Oh, geez, Seattle's only two and a half games behind the first place fading fast White Sox, who must have caught something from the Tigers, as in like fade out of it disease, falling like a rock. So Magadan's over there with a winning team. He's with his godfather. And then, of course, that this Gooden, who's going to pitch against us tonight. Dwight, you are a real goofball. You hear the thing that he's all upset because he's uh, Sheffield's uncle, allegedly, by um, way of third uh, cousin or something. So he's all bent out of shape because the Mets didn't make any effort to get Gary Sheffield, as if they have, like, more money to pay him some astronomical amount next season to add to their already bulging, gigantic, biggest in baseball $40 million payroll that's netting them still, like, ten and a half games behind us. I mean, these guys are just the biggest bunch of loudmouth prima donnas, just uh, pathetic. But I will say this, the big zeer oh! did make a beautiful play at first base there last night. That was my favorite. And almost as good as the one made by our center fielder, Henry Cott, oh! after uh, Chucky injured himself again. And by the way, another incredible play by Chucky Carr in center field last night. Bad ribs and all, an incredible play before he re-aggravated his injury. This kid is just a dynamite. It's a uh, 1048 on the IOD network.
Shoppers, make it a free call by dialing star IOD. Now, the Neil Rogers Show on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Takes forever to get that taste and smell out of your system. It's a study in heart-stopping terror. The chilling story of a deaf woman, alone and afraid, and the killer she'll never hear coming. Why won't you leave me alone? Academy Award winner Molly Maitland stars in Hear No Evil, a thriller so frightening it'll keep Hello? you... So frightening it'll keep you... Is anybody you out there? On the edge of this your... Isn't funny anymore. Shh, Marley, I'm talking. What? We're doing a commercial. Huh? A commercial. Uh... A commercial! We're doing a commercial! I can't hear Just you. shut up! Shut up! Do I say my line now? No! Help! Don't miss Miley Maitland in Hear No Evil. What you can't hear could kill you. And what she can't hear could screw up a really good commercial. Okay, so Anna Maria got hers. And uh, she's all excited about that. She got her s'mores, her ED s'mores, like a half a gallon of it. And uh, also we got to thank Vinny, Ignacio, and Mike, the boys at Bravo Ristorante, who are like in Lighthouse Point, 2486 North Federal Highway in Lighthouse Point. Bravo Restaurante Pizzeria and Salumeria? What the hell is that? Salumeria. But anyway, they sent over some great pasta for Joel, and George is eating it now with his cold. Yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it, okay? I said, no, I don't want that right now. And George said, oh, okay, I'll eat it because I'm very sick. And uh, he keeps sticking his tongue on everything and saying, oh, by the way, I'm sick and I have the flu. So don't anybody else have any of this. And then Jake came in here and got some, and uh, but I don't want to go into that. So, anyway, here we are. It's 11.07. Thanks again to our friends from uh, Ben and Jerry slash Edie's. Damon did a uh, Damon. I can't say I can't say that because there's nobody named Damon. Is there? There is? That's like a real name? I keep feeling like I miss, but like it should be Damien. Damon? Dame. They call him Dame for sure. Did a great job. We appreciate it. Not that I was jealous or anything. I just don't like being slighted by our friends, by people that we love, and that wavy gravy was worth the going through the whole exercise. And by the way, Rick, there's none left. Sorry. Here's Kendall on the star line. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Pretty good. Good. Well, I'm kind of excited. I'm listening to you since the last days of Zeta, and I've never had a reason to call till today. And today is the reason, okay? Yeah. So I got it. First of all, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had their frozen yogurt yet? No. The best. Is it? Yeah, and it's... There was some bad. of that in here, too, but I, I opted for the wavy gravy, and I'm not sorry I made the choice. You like coffee and almonds? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Fudge. Oh, I'm getting like chills just thinking about <laughs> it. I am. It's excellent. It's really great. Mm-hmm. Anyways, this morning... Um, Either that or I'm starting to go into a diabetic coma, which is a good possibility, oh. but boy, what a way to go. Chances are, but like you say, what a way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, this morning, I'm listening at about 10 to 9, driving to work, and on my way, I guess it's Sonny Hirsch does the sports, yeah. and he's reading off all the scores, and then he says... And I'm Sonny Hirsch from your Marlin King. Oh, I heard that. Yeah, I heard oh, that. Man, I died. That was beautiful. It was the best. Well, and I'll tell you one thing. We'd sure be doing a hell of a lot better job than having Joe Zagaki on the postgame show trying to be a shill. We wouldn't be doing that. Yeah, but some things will never change. Correct. It doesn't matter what station he goes mm-hmm. to. Some things will never change. So that's it. I just wanted to touch on the Ben and Jerry's and the Sonny Hirsch thing. And the only other thing is my father-in-law, who is a closet Met fan right now because of the Marlins, he's opening his mouth. He says he's going to bring the broom to the game tonight. Good. I hope he finds a good place to put it. So I just want to say one thing to him. You are a douchebag. Okay. Goodbye. See ya. Maybe he can either fly away with it or uh, stick it in the orifice. We have an open line in Broward, 5241 on the star line, star IOD. What is this exercise show that I'm watching right now, which is sure better than anything else? We have really been sorely lacking in flesh shows lately. And then I heard Rick the other day talking about how the uh, Spanish stations are the ones that have the good flesh on there. Did you hear that? Better late than never, Rick. Although they got some horrendous... Look at who... Isn't that Tomas uh, Pseudo-Intellectual uh, Espanol on the left there? Are you watching on 44? Not this guy, but the guy on the left. What is his name? Is that Tomas Regalado or one of those uh, Ojean Provocateurs from No Speaking English Radio? Come on, we don't want to see this geeky guy here with the glasses. I want George to tell me who this other guy is. Because I, I recognize that puss and he makes me very, very, very upset. Because he's one of those uh, traditional uh, Ojean... See the guy there? Yeah. Who's got his picking his nose? That's Tomas Regalado? That's, uh, isn't it a, that a Delgado that guy. or something? Who? A Delgado? Delgado? Gado del Sol? He's whoever you're thinking about. Bill Gado, who wrote the uh, TV radio column in the Herald the other day? That ain't who that, who that is. What am I asking you for, for crying out loud? Bigot? Anyway, let's go to uh, Miami. Hello? Hello, 
Neil. How are you doing? Um, I think the reason that they got rid of Magnin was because um, Dave Dombrowski owed... Um, Magnin came here to play every day, and when they got Sheffield, he couldn't play every day. So Why not? Well, why he, couldn't they? Why couldn't they put Sheffield in right field since we don't have a right fielder? He wanted Sheffield's to play. Sheffield's a third baseman. Huh? He's a third baseman. No, he wants to play outfield. Well, then let him. Well, then they messed up. And how about first base? Magadan is uh, was originally a first baseman. Oh well, yeah, you're right. Because you know, the big zero. Would you rather have him at first or the big zero? I'd rather have Magadan. There you go. Who's hitting 385 in the American League? True. Um, another thing. Um, do you get your show in Pennsylvania? No. You don't? Oh, okay, because I'm going up there for TV. Well, take some tapes. It'll keep you company. Uh, I think I will. Have a great time. Bro. All right, you too. See ya. We have an open line in Dade, 751 and one on the uh, green line. By the way, I told you that Ben and Jerry's gives me uh, instant... Um, I can't say it. Oh, that's it. Or I could have said... Squirt, squirt. That too. So any minute now, if you hear like a whole bunch of stuff like uh, running together, I guess that wasn't a good choice of words. If you're a whole bit of... A bunch of... You know what I'm talking about. Twelve minutes after 11 on the IOD network... Pizza Man doesn't get any... Morning News. Weekday mornings, right here. News Talk Radio 610. Oh, God. W-I-O-T. So Anna Maria, is, uh, she's like a magnet, man. She's just one of those sexual beings. Oh. I dig her like crazy. I love her mind. I love everything about her. I love her big, bountiful breasts. I don't know what it is. Anna Maria, we want to see ya. Zoomers that just don't quit, and it's warm where you sit. All of us horny guys, fantasize that you're by. We pay money to ya, to see run to ya. She's like a magnet, man. She's just one of those sexual beings. Oh. I dig her like crazy. I love her mind. I love everything about her. I love her big, bountiful breasts. I don't know what it is. <laughs> See, I figured I'd better play it twice there. Better play it about a hundred times today, because if I leave it around, it might, it might just disappear. It might walk out of here. Anyway, it's 11:17. Randy, by the way, is doing a show from her house this Saturday. I have no information about that. Also, we have a big thing coming up this Sunday, and I have no information about that. Do you know anything about it? Chuck's been promoting it because he's involved in it, but the rest of us, thank you so much. The rest of us know nothing about it. We have like a big uh, July 4th uh, bash, and uh, Randy and Chuck, I think, are involved in that thing Sunday. I don't know where. Is it at Bayfront Park? You, it is, we think. We don't know. We, we have nothing on this. And far be it for me to start attacking uh, Halcyon, who did eat a lot of ice cream. But it would be nice for us, or uh, boy Kurt, who also ate a lot of ice cream. But it would be nice to have a little info on this stuff. So, I mean, it, you know, it's great that Chuck is promoting it, but uh, Chuck's got a small select audience. By the way, Chuck uh, did a very nice thing here today. In fact, I like that morning show a lot more now than I ever did before. I think Chuck is God. Don't you? Chuck brought Jake in here. They have the same hairdo, I noticed. Did you notice that? Chuck is a little bit on the grayer, uh, grayer that was. But um, they had, like, the same uh, barber, I guess. They could both, both use a little trim. Anyway, here's a mobile in Miami. Hello? Neil. Yes, sir. Listen, I have only been listening the last half hour, 45 minutes. Did you go to game last night? Uh, no, I watched it on TV, though. I was very depressed. Okay, well, I'm becoming, using your word, psychotic. Oh, join the uh, club. We've had a lot of people who are very psychotic and very upset no, and PO'd. I'm a uh, season ticket holder. I've gone to approximately 80% of the game. Yes, great. Every game that I've gone to, the fans have been super nice, you know, the opposing team, everything else. Last night up in my section, there were two fights alone. Oh. And Probably welcome, some Met fans up there again. Welcome to Miami, the Met fans. Well how, well, how about on the field last night? There were about like three almost altercations, the Chucky Carr thing, and then Armstrong got into a big thing with uh, with the Lanceman, and then the Mets all came out on the field at one time when they threw a Chucky Carr, and then there was another thing later on, and it was it, like right on the edge. That, and it also happened with Benito a couple of times in the uh, two games so far. If this is the way people in New York are, tell them to stay the hell up in New York. Exactly. And also, one, other, one last thing was the fact that the, uh, when you were talking about that, these people, there was one Mets fan up there yelling and screaming, but one of the guys in the section just very politely pulled out the newspaper and says, is this the same team that's 28 games behind in first place? Right. And the guy shut up for 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. But I just want to tell the Mets fans, if you want to fight, go to hell back up to New York. The only other crowd that was almost as rowdy was the Philadelphia people, but I think that's the sixth borough anyway. So, you know, just... Tell them to go back up to New York. Tell them to burrow their way back where they came from. Please. Okay. Bye. Excellent. 
See, there's uh, all kinds of reasons to be uh, psychotic and aggravated. But we're still putting 40,000 and more in the ballpark for every game. And we'll have a big crowd there again tonight as we hope that uh, Charlie mows him down. Well, mow him down is not the way to, like, knuckles him down. Old knuckles. Uh, let's take a call. A portable phone in Tampa. This ought to be good. Hello? Neil. Yeah. How you doing, man? Okay, sir. This is your pies on in Tampa. D, getting ready to go to Daytona. All right. And I just had to call you. Uh, Charlie, how's pitching tonight? Yeah. Man, uh, you always bash our old Charlie, but he's the greatest. You know he's, he's the best. He's the best. They don't come any older than Charlie. <laughs> they don't come any older than Charlie, and uh, I want to call somebody a douchebag. Yes, sir. Uh, Mike from uh, Route 5, he's a uh, misdelivering, idiotic moron, uh, slaking douchebag. Okay. And uh, I was going to bash on you, but I can't do it today, Neil. Okay? Can't do it. I know. You just can't bring yourself to do it. I Have a great life, pal. Life. Get out of here. Get a life. We have an open line on the green line. Oh, by the way, four, four Myers, what am I laughing about? Because it's funny, that's why. They're off the air again. <laughs> they got back on the air at midnight last night, and we were on for a little while, and then all of a sudden the uh, tower got struck by lightning oh! just a little while ago, and they're off the air again. So I'm con I've concluded that there must be a god somewhere, because uh, if anybody deserves to be off the air a lot, it's WWCN and Tony Allen and Tony Ball DJ and that whole group of uh, miscreants over there who can't even get their fax machine working right. Not that George is upset about that, but he's getting sick and tired of that. I'll tell you that right now, Tony. He thinks that you guys are a bunch of idiots and goofballs and you make him sick and want to puke. You just If you just leave us alone and just steal our material and the program, we'd all be a lot happier. Here's Dave the Cop. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Gravy Davy line. How are you? Pretty good. Listen, the big out really sucked. I mean, we got to get rid the of The big out, that's a good one. Big out. And are you... Still giving up on the Cardinals, or am I? Maybe I'm right. No, as a matter of fact, the Phillies look ripe for the pickings. As uh, you were telling me that crap a couple of weeks ago, and I said I think you're getting a little carried away. But the Phillies are sliding on it. With all the barbecues going on in the next uh, week, and with yeah, Labor Cruck, Day, could, Cruck could be like watermelon man yeah, in about might, ten days. He might just die or something. Yeah. Anyway, uh, with all the cards coming on, I think you need one from the police. Uh, now, some of the jargon we use would be a three-letter one, Q R U, which means okay. It's not like God, but here we go. Anyway. Hey, Neil, who are you? Might okay. be good for the cart, man. You need, Beautiful. You know, if you're going to down the pigs, you got to up the pigs, too. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. You'd be good. Okay. All right, man. See ya. Boy, they're just, uh, we are cop-intensive on this show. I don't, and I don't want to pour water on his parade, but I do want to, uh, a word to the wise or unwise should be sufficient. This weekend, they're not only going to be looking for you going two miles an hour over the speed limit, but they're going to be doing that seatbelt shtick again. That's right. They're going to be playing that game again, pulling you over to... Right, exactly. George says, you're number one, guys. And I wear one. And I don't, and I won't, under any circumstances, okay? It's just uh, when you're big and fat and you're, wearing, and you're driving a beautiful Corvette, you want a little freedom there. You want to be able to reach over and put your arm on Jake's shoulder and say, good job today, ba pal. Uh, it's just a little joke. He, now, isn't that something that Chuck had to bring him in here, though? That he, had, In other words, he had to come in here with a security blanket. Now, he'll work his way up to the day when he comes in here alone, and then he'll be sorry. It's 11.23 on the IOD Network. Hi, this is Jim. Love your show, Neil. Love you. Love you. That was so weak. I'm almost embarrassed. You pop out on the scene. Make the girl scream. In that stumble and fine. It's 16. Chest. Ooh, and it blew, it ruined Ooh. my vest, it came out of my jeans and into my life, oh, how it makes me feel fine, it's 16, so beautiful, and it's mine. Ooh. 1127 at WID, we ought to play that one more time, you know, with that gym thing, uh, evidently he redid that out of the kindness of his parts. That was so bad, Jim. Hi, this is Jim. 
Love your show, Neil. Love you. Love you. <laughs> oh, God. Man, you can just uh, see the feathers falling up, can't you? In fact, we had to clean a few of them up here this morning. It's 1128 at WIOD. Here's uh, Dania. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. This is David. Hi, David. How you doing? Pretty good. How's the Marlins doing today? The what? The Marlins. What does that mean? Well, the, the Marlins, because I heard the, the one yesterday, and yesterday I heard... Uh, you, you heard. Wait a minute, you heard the one yesterday? Uh, Sunday. You, you heard the one Sunday? Right. You heard the one? Yeah, and you I You heard, heard the one by the Vogues? We don't have that. Maybe no. Joey will play it for you this weekend. We have an open line in Broward, 524. If anybody thinks I'm talking to somebody that uh, missing that many bricks, they're dreaming, okay? Call up at 2. Rick will talk to you for a while. By the way, Rick, I'm sorry we don't have any ice cream left. Do we? Not a drop. There's nothing in here. We have three styrofoam containers, and it was great. And just about everybody, they started a little slow, but finally uh, Lisa came in here, and Lisa Campbell came in, and um, Stephanie, and Annette. And Mercy, 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 and uh, Sharon, and uh, of course Cheryl and Bob were in here immediately, if not sooner, which was fine, because they were very, very pissed about the uh, treatment they got the previous day on another show. And uh, Chuck came in here with uh, Jake, and uh, who else? And the uh, boy Kurt was in for a little, uh, and Halcyon, of course, came in and didn't, uh, she was a little bit recalcitrant because she got chewed out when she came in here the other day chewed out by the uh, obnoxious one who doesn't like to share with anybody and then comes on and has the audacity to lie and tell us that he didn't get any. Now, I have it on very good authority that he got some. And maybe some ice cream. Here's the Gables. Hello. Neil. Maybe it was from the Weasel. Yes. That last caller was probably one of the fans that uh, gives... Uh, Sounded like a Mets fan to me. <laughs> yeah, he probably gives the kind that gives Charlie Huff a standing ovation when uh, he walks in the winning run like he did last week. And then uh, Latch comes out and sends him to the bench, and everybody gets up and gives him a standing ovation. Yeah. And he's, he's well, we like Charlie. What's wrong with that? Huh? We figure anybody that old or can still stand up deserves a standing ovation. Uh, I don't know. And, and always, booing the, uh, always booing the pitcher every time he throws first base. Anyway, I didn't want to talk about that. Why not? Huh? Speak your piece. Don't, be, uh, don't hold it back. Let it out today. Today is the day for venting after a couple of very, very frustrating baseball nights for us. Let's let it all out. And let's even let one or two of the Mets fans call in and tell us how great they are. And we'll all just laugh until we fall down and puke. I want to say something about this Magadin conspiracy. By uh, the way, we are going to start the official Dave Magadin watch on this program. We've already uh, done it each of the first three games he's played. And tomorrow, I see they're playing an afternoon game today, Seattle at Minnesota 115. So tomorrow, you can be sure one of the first pieces of business will be to see how Dave did today. Excellent. Excellent. Who's hitting 385, by the way, in the American League? Mm -hmm. Even uh, they had an interview with Sheffield. He's not even from this town. And even from Tampa. Him, huh? He's from Tampa. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't think he's had too much time to follow the Marlins. But the first thing that came out of his mouth was, why didn't they put me in right field and keep and put Maggot in at third if they really wanted a good lineup? Right. Because <laughs> this oh! Atta boy, Gary. guy blows, and, and that Rich Rodriguez guy, he comes in his first pitch. How did you like that run. first pitch, man? They didn't have to send the space shuttle into orbit because Eddie Murray hit his first pitch into orbit uh, two nights ago. That ball is still going. If it wouldn't have hit that gray uh, stuff there in the upper deck, it would have still been in orbit. I mean, with a lineup like that, we might have had a chance maybe third, possibly even second. I mean, if they're talking about the... the I think we'd have won the damn division if you want to be... <laughs> <laughs> It was, they, they probably, I know, think we'd have probably won the World Series if they wouldn't have screwed our team up. They, they probably wanted to save some money, you know, or, or something like well, that. Well, what do you mean save some money? How much do you think it's going to cost them to sign Gary Sheffield next year? He's going to want at least $85 billion. Yeah. And then Wayne won't be able to uh, paint, uh, paint that bald spot. Yeah, it's, it's pretty frustrating. There's nothing we can do about it now. But, no. Uh, well, it's like crying over spilt milk. I, they should have consulted with us first, yeah. shouldn't they? Yeah, they should. Yeah. Shouldn't they have talked it over with the fans and said, look, we're thinking of doing a really stupid thing. Are you going to let us do it? We should have said, no way, Jose. Yeah, but like uh, most things that go on in this town, they just uh, do it, uh, forget the consequences. And then we have to suffer. You're absolutely correct, mm -hmm. sir. Well, Neil. In closing, get the honey, Hoonier. Hey, can I uh, call somebody a douchebag? <laughs> yeah. I owe him one. <laughs> Ed and Varadetta Liquors, you're a big Russian-German beer-drinking douchebag. <laughs> okay. All right, thank See. you. Get the honey, Hoonier. That could have been the greatest line we've ever had on the show. Now, we don't have that on the, in the thing, though, do we? 
Oh, you haven't watched that movie yet. Well, between now and the end of the holiday weekend, you better damn well watch that movie. And Mr. Fat wants that tape back, too, by the way. I don't know what else is on it. Probably some porno stuff. But uh, seriously, it's a great movie, Fatso. And when you hear that line that after you've seen the movie, get the honey, Junior, then you'll like pee in your pants and fall off the chair and start rolling on the floor until Anna Maria comes in. <laughs> she looked pretty good today, I've got to be honest with you. I mean, if it was a choice between her and Randy, I'm sorry. Why do I? See, I, now I'm flagellating that whole thing, and Mitch Lewis is the one that does that. It's 1133. Let's take a call from, uh, that's the wrong one, I think. Wrong, hold on. Don't go away. Tampa. Like I said, Tampa. Hello? Yes, sir. Neil? Yeah. How you doing? Great. Well, oh, is, what, what is this controversy with the uh, sun goats? Crap. Are they going to start uh, abusing animals and cutting them, sacrificing them for, for, for the stupid crap? Abusing animals and what? And, uh... Coming to my mama? You know, uh, killing animals for, for the gods. That's in your mane. In your mane? Yeah, man. What, what? In your low mane? In your mane. Meaning it, it's not... It shouldn't be constitutionally it shouldn't... They shouldn't be doing that to an animal. Shouldn't, he said. That's shouldn't. He didn't say what you thought. He said, he said shouldn't. Shouldn't? Yeah, yeah. Man, I don't know. I don't believe in any of that voodoo mumbo-jumbo. Well, and that old black magic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I Look what it did for Sammy Davis. Uh, oh, yeah? I didn't know he did that stuff. And Louis Prima and Keeley Smith, and I think they're all dead, yeah? <laughs> you know, Neil, you know, something pisses me off, too. Well, go right ahead. Well, I went, I went to the ring the other day. You went to what? No, we, we're not meeting anybody under 10 until 12 o'clock, and I got there at 10.30. Anybody Nobody under 10? me off big time. I like to call those, uh, can I call someone a douchebag? Sure. <laughs> those people from the U United States of America. The United States of America. In Tampa, you're a bunch of douchebags. Okay. Uh, Beautiful. That was my favorite call of the year so far. We have an open line that's on the green line, and of course it won't be from Fort Myers or Cape Coral because they can't hear us because WWCN is off for the duration today again. What a shame. God, how are we going to make it through the day today? We'll never get enough calls without them. 1-800-944-9463. We do have an open line there for like Orlando and Tallahassee. We've been getting calls from Orlando lately. Have you noticed that? Like a few here and there. Huh? What are you looking at me like that? No, God. Not from that, Orlando, although I wish we did. God, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if during this uh, nice long holiday we'd get a call from our good old buddy Orlando and he'd call and, like, uh, make up with us and patch things over, so to speak? Because uh, I still have a soft spot in my heart, heart for uh, Orlando. We all do. Even those out there who ha are in perpetual self-denial. Even those guys out there who are, like, uh, you know, wrapped up in their uh, embarrassment. Let's go. No, let's not. It's 1136 on the IOD Network. Today's show is brought to you by the makers of Tiger Kitty, the cat food with the taste of real human flesh. Tiger Kitty, don't ask how we make it. And now, back to our show. Nothing makes you feel more like a woman than the romantic sensation of silky lingerie. That touch of satin as you slip on a pair of thong back bikinis. A soft stretch garter belt with stockings. Or a black lacy camisole. Oh my goodness! I've never felt so womanly. Victor's Secret. The catalog for cross-dressers. I haven't been this excited since Alex Trebek said put your hands on your buzzers. Victor's Secret. Nothing makes you feel more like a woman. 1140 at WYOD. We have an intercepted uh, memo here, which we always enjoy. This is from Nick Lawrence at WFTL, a.k.a. The Light Bulb. Two hosts and programmers from uh, Programming Management, Ray, chronic callers. The following callers have abused the privilege of calling this station. One, Angry Sam, a.k.a. Sam the Poet. Two, Slim. Three, Dr. Slinky. Four, Meat Market Millie. Five, Gilbert. Ah, oh, jeez. Wait a minute. Is he in here? Oh, yeah. Five, Gilbert. <laughs> Six, Harvey from Kendall. Seven, Sightless Mike. My, my, my. Chronic callers stop other people from getting into the station, says Nick. These callers are banned by programming management. Also, the caller, Henry, should be kept to one call per week. Signed, Nick Lawrence. Take a bath, Nick. Okay, it's 11.41 at WIOD, and let's do uh, beautiful Pompano. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing today? Tremendous. Hey, uh, did anybody check and see if uh, Rentis got a hit last night? Yes, he did. Didn't you see the game? 
I had to go to bed early. I turn it off about the fifth inning. I get up. At you didn't. Four you in didn't the see. You, then you didn't see the beautiful error he made in about the. Uh, let's see. It was the top of the eighth inning, I do believe, when he made the bases were loaded with the two outs. Easy ground ball by Saberhagen, the pitcher to first, and Arrest is like uh, starts taking off with it for the bag, but the ball is behind him, and then he goes to reach for it and falls down, and then uh, the pitcher comes over to cover the bag, and Arrest still has plenty of time because Saberhagen's not even running it out, and he throws the ball, and there's Richie Lewis waiting, and he throws it away, and two runs score. Oh boy! And then in the bottom of the inning, after it was now safely seven to one, and the game was way out of reach, Arrest comes up, and bada bing, there's a base hit. Oh. But of course, pre- prior to that, all during the game when we were still in the game, he was like. Uh, Oh, for... Oh! That's why they call him the big... Oh! He's probably leading all National League first baseman in big O's. In big O's and in uh, big chokes. Big he's choking chokes. it over there. Oh, boy. Depressing. Very depressing. We made a bad decision, sir. I just uh, can't emphasize it enough. We traded away a quality major league player, and we left ourselves with a rookie... Uh, kid in right field who's not ready for prime time who's striking out at a rate that uh, is just uh, staggers the mind it boggles your imagination Daryl Whiffmore Whiffmore he's whiffing more than I've ever seen who's our backup first I, baseman? I beg your pardon the backup first baseman the backup first baseman is Jeff Conine who by the way had three hits last night and is like a legitimate and doesn't get anywhere the credit he should I don't know why because he's kind of like a bland guy and he's not uh, real flashy but he uh, had uh, two tremendous home runs in two games and he had three more hits last night he's our backup first baseman I think he's going to be in the fourth position in the batting lineup soon I hope so maybe that'll help that should do it maybe that'll wake up the big O yeah but I think we better look elsewhere. Exactly, and it won't be Henry Cotto either, who also made another nice error last night, and I'm glad that you fell asleep before it happened. Have a oh. great day, pal. Hey, yeah. I call a couple of my buddies douchebags. And good luck to us all, yes. Uh, the guy that traded Maggot in a way. Dave Dombrowski, yes. And the big O. Okay. The big douchebag. See ya. <laughs> the big zero. Oh. Yeah. Look, it's not personal, Orestes. We like you. You're a very nice guy, and you're articulate, and you like look like a human being, and uh, everybody loves you, but we just want you to go away. Don't go away, mad. Just go away. See, like with Hunier, it was personal. We just, he had a crappy attitude, and he wouldn't uh, run after the ball, and he just uh, was a piece of crap. Orestes is a good guy. I like him. He just can't play. <laughs> That's all. I mean, Henry Cotto, we don't know him well enough to have an opinion one way or the other. We know he blows, but personally, he, he might be a nice guy. I don't know. He's uh, getting a little long in the tooth, and he's uh, he sucks. So, I, I, you know, we were doing, it reminds me of WIOD. It's like the Mike Ranieri deal, okay? It's the same concept. I mean, Chuck's a great guy. I love Chuck. Chuck is like a brilliant guy. He's got a great voice. He's got a great sense of humor, a great personality. But you won't ever hear that on that show because it's a news show. And so Ranieri was there, and we were, we were doing fine. Everything was just fine, as somebody used to say, but never will again on this show. And it was great. And then all of a sudden, uh, they started the uh, front office again. I think they must have called Dave Dombrowski, and they started doing some stupid things. And uh, we missed it. And now we're having a little problem every now and then, here and there, like in certain day parts. Here's South Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Uh-huh. Well, this isn't the Dr. Slinky, is it? <laughs> no. Or Sam the Poet. No. Or, or, hello, lovely lady. Or, Harvey from Kendall. Or My, My, My. Uh, no, that uh, wasn't Harvey from Kendall, lovely lady. That was uh, Jack from the Beach. Oh, Jack from the Beach. Don't you remember Jack from the Beach with the gruff voice? Hello, well, lovely I, lady. i got to admit one thing. I, I, there's one person I do get tired of hearing, and that's My, My, My on Rick and Sud. My, My, My. Well, you know who that is? Do you know who that is? Blind Mike, and he works at... No, it's, it's not the real Blind Mike. It's uh, it's uh, Ken Block again. Oh, is it? The chip off the old block with the uh, punk with the uh, dog racing tapes. Oh. He calls with about 20 different voices. And i, I got to admit that the uh, the Blind Mike thing he does is very funny, but like maybe once a month would be yeah, good, you know? Yeah, well, not every day. Yesterday he went on and on, and he was like reaching and stretching, and there was nothing that he said that was remotely humorous. Listen, you said something yesterday, and I'm trying to... Except maybe, look out now. Uh, the Outsiders. Yeah. You mentioned the movie. That was a very distressing and depressing movie, well, yes. I liked it. it again, uh, you liked young it? young actors in it. But I don't remember seeing Tom Cruise in that movie, and I thought I heard you say he was in yes, it. Yes, he was. 
I'm going to have to go rent it again. I'll bet. Check that out. <laughs> I'll bet you will. I will. See, Thomas Howell is in there, who was oh, just a I skinny, punky kid in there, and unfortunately, I think got killed, George said, in that movie, which is very depressing, and then turned into, like, kind of started working out and filled out a little bit and turned out to be one of my favorite actors of all time, and in one of the great movies in history called The Hitcher yep. with C. Rutger Howell. That's what I was going to say. I never heard of the movie The Hitcher. You wait wait a minute. What are you laughing about? You mentioned... What, well, what's, what are you, what's so C. funny? C. Rutger Howell. Did I say C. Rutger Howell? Uh, C. Thomas Howell. I said C. Rutger Howell, C. Thomas Howell. Uh, C. Which, Rutger Howell, do Thomas uh, what Green. Whatever his name is. That's well, there is a lot of very uh, erotic uh, overtones to that movie, and nobody knows what it is. That exactly. scene, that one, in the Hitcher, right. that one scene where Rutger Howell is sitting there, and they got him in jail, and then uh, C. Thomas Howell comes in, and uh, he goes in there, and I don't even want to go into the thing about the spitting and he right. like, uh, yeah. Exactly. There's and, something and a little bit, the uh, there's some side. erotic undertones and overtones in that movie. Well, I'll tell you what. I, and I, any movie with C. Thomas Howell that has erotic overtones is a movie that I'm going to be watching many, many times. You mentioned it. I went and rented it. I'd never heard of C. Thomas Howell. And then I remember the movie um, uh, Soul Man, which was funny. It was great. He was yeah. funny in that movie. It was a cute movie. <laughs> and I didn't realize he was the same kid that was in The Outsiders. That's who he was, thought. yes. Um... And Matt Dillon was in The Outsiders, and um, right, and uh, oh, Emilio them. Emilio Estevez, oh, um, and uh, Ralph Macchio with uh, the Zits, right, and all those kids. You, um, you know what pisses me off? Two things that piss. Everybody me off seems to be pissed off today, which the is what we like. Trade and no Godfather's pizzas in South Florida. Now, those yeah. things piss yeah. me off. You're right. Godfather's was tremendous. And you're mentioning the ice cream. I never buy ice cream. I bought a half a gallon last week of Vidi strawberry, mm -hmm. and sat, took out a spoon. Gone. That's why I don't buy it. Yeah. And that, that's oh yeah, what you can't. Tell you. you can't stop. Once you start with something no, that can't. good, you can't stop. Now there's what I was going to tell you. You're playing just what I want. A buddy of mine. He's 25. Well, you years mentioned old. Godfathers. A buddy of mine. We, him and I were hanging out the other day. I bet. And I talked to him, and he never seen The Godfather. Yeah. He never saw it, and I got him to sit down and watch it. And I, I must have seen that movie a thousand times. Mm -hmm. and I could just sit there and watch it over and It's over one of those movies I can't imagine anybody could ever see it too much. It's the, well, there's, there's some movies when you've seen it enough times, you just could never watch it again. And if you started to watch it again, you'd say, nah, it's just... But with The Godfather, if it, you happen to come across it on the cable or the satellite or something, it, you just sit there and you get into it again well, because it's like part of your life. It's well, like uh, there. I rent them and I copy my, the, whatever movies I like the best. I got all three Godfathers. Yeah. All three of them. I got to get in to watch the other two. But I love it. And uh, in closing, Neil, don't be a nickhead. Right on the heels of the Nick Lawrence memo, I wonder if there's something Freudian about that. As in, please take a bath soon. See, the only thing we can't uh, figure out yet is how to stop this. I mean, not to stop it, but like put it on pause. We can, we can like make it go away. Huh? No, no, they are. They're working on that. They're gonna, be, they're gonna uh, have a thing where we can like just put it on pause, which will really be great. But anyway, we're uh, working on it over here. We have an open line in Dade, seven five one. It must be one hell of a boring holiday weekend for everybody because uh, the lines are smoking here, and I don't know how. I, not that I'm complaining. Believe me, trust me. Although you get disappointed if I don't bitch and complain, so I'm trying to make you happy with that too. We're getting too many calls. Seven five one nine four six three. It's uh, 10 before noon on the IOD Partial Network.